Recently in my game body review of the power armor model from Fallout 4, I mentioned in that review that intersecting shells were bad and by doing so confused quite a lot of people who one, didn't really understand what shells were or two, didn't really understand why intersecting shells could be bad for 3D printing and three, wondered why I would want to combine the model into one shell instead of using them as separate shells. So in this video, I want to cover what shells actually are when it comes to 3D printing and also why intersecting shells are bad for most 3D printing applications. And it's worth mentioning that I am completely self-taught when it comes to stuff. So the terms I use will probably not be 100% accurate. So you probably shouldn't use me as a reference for your paper at university on intersecting shells in STL files for 3D printing. Or maybe you should, I don't care. Let's get started. Alrighty, welcome back to Maker's Muse, guys. So what I have here is Mesh Mixer, and I'm going to use Mesh Mixer to demonstrate what shells are when it comes to 3D printing and working with mesh files, particularly in this case, STL files. So I have this bunny here, and the first thing you need to understand with STL files is the fact that an STL file is made up of a lot of triangles in 3D space. If I hit the W key, it's gonna show the wireframe, and you can see this model is composed of hundreds of triangles. And this is the backbone of the STL file format. It's basically a lot of coordinates which make up a, a file. And those coordinates pertain to where those triangles are in 3D space. So you could have a single triangle in 3D space with reference to an origin. That would be an STL file. STL files don't even remember what units they were created in. For example, I could create something in inches and export it as an STL file and import it into a, a slicer which imports in millimeter units and the scaling would be completely wrong. There is no data in the STL format to preserve that. All you have are these 3D triangles in space with reference to an origin. So what does this have to do with shells then? Well, before I even get into that, let me show you the bottom of this bunny. So what you can see here is you can see a hollow cavity into this shape which means this is not an enclosed area. So with 3D printing, it's the job of the slicer to take a STL file of an enclosed area and then work out it's gonna slice that, put infill, perimeters, that sort of thing to make that object. In this case, this object is actually known as a surface and that is actually specifically a zero thickness surface. So in the mathematical term for zero thickness, it has no thickness. And that means that this can't be physically recreated in its current form. It's impossible to make in the real world. You can't have something that's zero thickness. So I'm going to turn this surface into a shell. And to do this in Mesh Mixer, I'm basically just going to cap off that bottom part. So I'm going to repair it and it's capped it off. So what we have now is a shell, also known as a manifold mesh or a watertight mesh. Now the watertight uh, analogy is actually quite good. Imagine you're filling this with water and you want that water to contain within the object and not leak out. So watertight mesh means there's no holes or gaps, which is what you want for 3D printing. So we have a shell, but what are multiple shells? Well, I can take this object here in the object browser we see it and I can literally just duplicate it. Duplicate, 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 duplicate. I've now created multiple uh, instances of this shell, otherwise known as multiple shells. And I can demonstrate that even clearer by moving some of them around. So I'll move one there and I'll move this one here. And then for example, move this one here. And last one, let's move him up. Why not? Okay, there we go. So what we have here are multiple shells. We have multiple instances of our bunny, but let's have a look at the watertight analogy. Would this still be watertight? Well, yes, actually, because they're all watertight and they're all separated from each other, which means that the 3D printing slicer can easily understand what should be filled in with infill and perimeters and what should be left with nothing. But what if we do this, instead of having the objects separated with a gap between them, we've just rotated them around each other and they are still in the same area and they are intersecting. This is known as intersecting shells. And this is where things can start becoming a bit of a problem for a slicer. The reason being is the STL format will not prevent you from doing this. So for example, I can select all of these objects and combine them and now I can export this as an STL file, there's nothing preventing me from doing that. 
So this is the STL file I just saved out and I brought it back into the mesh mixer. It is a single STL file which I call lots of bunnies and it is indeed a lot of intersecting shells. So how could this become a problem for a slicer? Well I'll demonstrate it by trying to plain cut this model. So with plain cut, what it tries to do is work out where it can cut an object and cap it off. But because these objects are intersecting each other, it doesn't know what to do. These, remember, these triangles are just in space. They have zero thickness. All they're doing is trying to define an enclosed manifold shape. And by intersecting them like we've done, it makes things very complicated. So as you can see here, the auto solve for the plane cut isn't even working. And if I try to accept, it's gonna end up with stuff like this, which is the intersecting shells all creating their own faces over each other. And this is pretty nasty geometry. Again, it's still a legit uh, STL file that you could save off, but it's gonna lead to very nasty files when you bring them into your slicer. So having said that, let's bring this file into Simplify 3D and I'll show you where intersecting shells can cause issues with your slicing. Right, so I've got uh, lots of bunnies STL file in the slicer. Don't worry about support material or anything like that. I don't care at this stage. I've got my default process for my Mark II, Prusa Mark II, and I'm gonna to prepare to print. So, first thing you'll notice is it does resolve. It will print something, which is fantastic, which is what we want. But looking in closer, you'll notice a few anomalies. And if I let it play layer by layer, you can see what a mess it's made. So what the program is trying to do is it's trying to work out what is an enclosed and enclosed space and what should it fill with infill and what should it leave separated. So what it's actually doing is discreetly uh, separating these different intersecting areas intentionally and really you're going to end up with a model that's going to fall apart as soon as you print it and it's not going to at all look like what you intended because we haven't combined the shells. The shells are intersecting. Now because this is such a prevalent problem, a lot of slicers have come up with ways to try to deal with intersecting shells. So within Simplify 3D, for example, if you go into Advanced, there is slicing behavior for non-manifold segments where we can discard or heal, but also we can merge all outlines into a single solid model. Well, that means it's gonna disregard the fact they're all intersecting. It's terrible, but it's just gonna ignore that. And it's going to merge all outlines into a single solid model, which is actually a setting that Gambody recommended I ticked for their model which had intersecting shells. So that's great, it's gonna fix all our problems, right? Well, no, we've actually fixed some things and introduced other issues. So if you remember the setting, it said it's gonna merge all outlines together, which means we're losing internal details. As you can see here, zooming down, it's kind of trying to figure out what it should join together and what it shouldn't. And you've got like a big fill there, you've got like a void there, you've got these gaps and at the top of the model, you've got these filled in areas where it's tried to figure out I'm merging the outline, therefore that area must be filled. So that's a poor solution as well. So what should you do if you find you have intersecting shells and you need to print that model? Well, in Simplify 3D, at least you can do it, but it can become very tiresome if that model has lots of intersecting shells. In this case, we only have the four bunnies. What I can do is go to mesh and separate connected surfaces, which is gonna separate out all of our shells. So we've got that one, that one, that one, that one. And now we can print it. And because we've told Simplify 3D that these are separate shells, it now knows what to combine and what not to combine, and the model will be created as it should be. But what about the T60 armor? Why is having multiple shells in this just terrible? Well, a lot of you raised the point that having multiple shells will make it easier to break the model up for printing, which could be applicable in some cases, but the problem is these details intersect each other in the actual model. So if I printed them separately, they wouldn't actually go together because the physical objects can't just phase through each other like ghosts. It's, you can't translate the digital file to the real world file by using the shells as they're provided. Now there is tricks to then use uh, Boolean operations to cut away, but the problem is this model just has far too many shells. Like every single screw on the top of the helmet is a shell. Every single detail added in is a shell. Every, you know, they're not combined into logical areas. Now you could do it yourself, but are you really gonna do that with over 200 individual parts? I don't think so. 
So I guess the final point is how should you fix intersecting shells if you come across them? Well, you can use some free software to do it. For example, you can use Mesh Mixer to uh, join together intersecting shells using the Boolean Union. If they're just a couple, it's not the best, but it will work. And you can also use the Make Solid tool, which uses a lot of processing power, but it's great for really broken meshes with lots of intersecting shells. Also, you can try the NetFab Cloud service, which I believe is back online now or the 3D Builder service if you have Windows 10. Those services will stitch shells together with almost no damage to the overall mesh and you'll end up with a mesh that has no issues at all printing because all the shells have been combined. So there you have it guys, that's what a shell is and that's what intersecting shells are and that's why I think they're a terrible idea for 3D printing. I hope you found this video useful guys here on Makers Muse and if you want to see future 3D printing tips, tricks and reviews, I'd love you to, you to subscribe, it would mean a lot to me. Um, yeah, it's really hot today, I've had to turn the fan off, I bought an industrial fan <laughs> to do this video. So thank you so much for watching guys, uh, I'm going to turn it back on and I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Makers Muse. Catch you later guys, bye. He has placed satellites into water. He is actually...